That's why I'm on the line. Uh, hello? Hello. Um, I would like to confess to a murder. Okay. Well, so where are you? I actually, um, 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 I'm on a street, mm -hmm. um, um, in Montreal. Okay, all right. And what do you mean by neutral? Like, what, what, well, how? I mean, well, well, I mean, they're not nice and they're not mean. I mean, okay. like, they're just, they're just fine. They're just fine. Yeah. Okay. So it would be nice to have some toilet paper. This is the interrogation of Cameron Rogers. I'll get back to the interrogation in just a second. Let me give you some background information. Cameron at this time was around 24 and he attacked his parents. He used a wooden sword on his mother's neck and then his dad's lung. He then hid the bodies in the backyard of the house for a week. He tried to escape to America but he was rejected by a border patrolman to which he dialed 911 and confessed to his actions. I'm going to analyze Cameron and the interrogator during this video. So if you do end up liking it, please hit subscribe. Let's see how this interrogation goes. Oh, there's no toilet paper in there? No. I, uh, but that's, that's, that's probably okay. a gram. All right. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the rules are yeah. here because I'm not from Montreal. Mm -hmm. I'm from Ottawa. Mm -hmm. I can certainly ask them, but I can't yeah, make you any promises whether or not we can get it because I'm just kind of like a visitor right I know. now. I, I know. got that? Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to... Um, verify how you'd been treated by the officers. Did anybody make any promises? Like in terms of, and by promise I mean that uh, telling you that if you uh, say something to the police, we're going to give you a reward. It is believed in media that when reports are given on an event, the first hour of what is reported is the closest you'll ever get to the truth. With that in mind, in an interrogation, the first hour or even the first day, the initial interactions with the subject could be far more revealing than everything else that comes after because they've had less time to think about it, they have less reaction time and they're generally in an emotional state. With that in mind, an attack on his parents for someone so young, the officer's sole purpose at this moment is to remain calm, be motherly even, but she is being extremely caring at this moment in time just to ensure he feels completely at ease. Um, Cameron, how old are you? I'm 22. You're 22, oh, yeah. okay. And what have, are you in school? Or I, I, I was in school. Okay, what were you studying? Uh, electromechanical engineering technology, no, uh, electromechanical engineering robotics technician. Wow, and how long have you been studying that? Um, I was in that, for the first year this year but I came out of another one from the, like for the past two years I was in uh, engi uh um, I was in mechanical engineering technol technology but then I changed okay for this year into the first one I mentioned good good and what, what are, were your plans what did you want to do with that degree I didn't want that degree oh you didn't no. so why were you taking it because my parents told, told me to take it. Um. There are three types of individuals who attack their parents. Someone that's antisocial, or someone who is mentally ill, or someone, as it seems in this case, who has been severely abused beyond limit. Cameron, for the first time, has suggested a motive by telling the interrogator he was forced to do a college degree by potentially overbearing parents. I wouldn't actually get money because they would just say that they'd owe me money. So I actually didn't have any money. Oh, that must have been hard. Yeah. So how did you manage then? Like, if you wanted to go out or if you wanted to do something? Uh, well, uh, if I would want to use money, they would have to approve of it. Okay. Okay. And where did you kill them? In our kitchen in your kitchen okay all right and um what was going on right before you killed them i was shopping melon sorry i was shopping, shopping me mel melon. melon yeah okay and where were your parents in relation to you at that point um uh, my mom was doing something else in the kitchen okay and my dad was somewhere else in the house okay and then what happened <laughs> Do, do I have to talk about this? I don't want to talk about this. Okay, well, why don't we talk about something else for... for? 
It seems he's avoiding responsibility when she is trying to talk to him about it. It could be a case of cognitive dissonance where half of him is telling him you did it for this reasons and he's justified and the other half is saying you should never have done it regardless. Either way, it seems he's still in a state of shock because I don't even think he's moved. His body would have become numb by now. His fingers haven't moved. He did move his foot earlier and generally speaking, his head has stayed in the same direction, uh, looking straight and then sometimes looking right, but only because she's there. So I think he's still coming to terms with everything that happened. Okay, and how did you get them out to the back? I had to, uh, uh, well, I, I, I dragged my mom in a tarp. Okay. And then I put my dad in a suitcase okay. and then pulled him out. Okay, and how did you get him in a suitcase? Well, I sort of rolled them into it. Okay, all right. Did he... Did you have to do anything to get him into the suitcase? Or? Well, it wasn't like a perfect fit. Like, I didn't, like, make him, like, fit. Okay. Like, it, it wasn't, like... Okay. All right. And how long did you remain in the house after the... A week. A week? Okay. And where were they for that one week? Well, um, for a day, they were wherever they got killed. Okay. And then... Uh, after that, um, was spent taking them out to the backyard and then cleaning up a little bit. Okay. So it wasn't, you know, blood all over the place. For, for sure, yeah. Because you didn't want anybody, any family members mm. to see that. Yeah, yeah, that's, okay, no, that's, uh, uh, that's understandable. And I, and I can tell you that where they are now, I don't think you need to worry about the family members seeing them like that okay mm -hmm. so we're going to make sure and that's normal we don't want it's interesting because it seems like in his mind when he was in a situation what to do with the bodies he had a hundred calculations going on i mean he's a genius right look at what he's studying he's obviously a very smart academic lad to which his brain functions at a much faster speed to you know someone like me so it's no surprise that he had that already i don't think he pre-planned this personally myself but why don't you guys comment tell me so you took the train to Montreal, and then what did you do once you arrived in Montreal? I bought a ticket to uh, the U.S. Okay. But it didn't work. Right. Because uh, you couldn't... Yeah, there was no visa. Okay, right. Uh. Okay. And what was your plan in, in going to New York? Somehow survive. Pardon? Somehow survive. Like, I didn't really have, like, a plan. You didn't have a plan, no. Eh? Was just to get as far away from Ottawa as I could. Did you sustain any injuries while, as a result of what happened to your parents? Yeah. Okay. What? So I know you're cutting melons, and w that was about at eleven o'clock on the Sunday morning. Yeah. What caused you to 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 do that? Like, it was something said or no. done or. No, it was literally just a spur of the moment. I don't even know. Like, I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, it was took me 50 minutes of going back and forth about to do it and then not to do it. Okay, all right. What was causing you to want to do it? Why is it you are thinking you wanted to do it? I don't remember. Okay. All right. Okay, where did you get the knives? The kitchen. In the kitchen? Okay. And um, which knife did you use on which person? I don't remember. You don't remember? Okay. But I think I remember this. there was a smaller one that was only used on my mom. Now that he's going into the act itself in detail, you see how his tone changes? He's about to cry. Uh, maybe a little bit of remorse. Maybe... Uh, realization on the severity of what he's done this is probably the first time he's fully gone into detail with another human being and is realizing truly the situation okay all right okay and um do you remember what your mom said to you right before like before all of this happened yeah no no okay was there a conversation going on no. with you and her no mm. Okay, um, have you told anybody else about this other than, uh, so you've told the 911 operator in yeah. Montreal, you spoke to the Montreal officers, yeah. we've spoken, have yeah. you talked to anybody else about it? 
No. Okay. Um, between the time that you've killed uh, your your parents mm -hmm. and now, have you hurt anybody else? No. No. Okay. So there's no other. You haven't killed anybody no. else, and you haven't injured anybody else. No. no. Okay. Okay. So I'm still not clear on exactly what the motive was. I'm just going to render it down to too much pressure and he couldn't handle his parents being overbearing, so to speak. Um, Cameron Rogers will serve two concurrent life sentences with no chance of parole for 20 years um, after he agreed to a plea deal. He did, in the court case, claim sexual abuse by his father, but then he later recanted this statement, confirming it was all lies. So, why don't you guys comment? Tell me what you think. See you guys next time.